Hey there riders, Motogeno Chris here and I thought I'd cover the new 890 Duke GP which KTM have just unveiled. From the name I was expecting an even more off its chops version that would sit above the 890 Duke R. We've got a standard version, the R, a GP has to be better than the R right? Especially as KTM referred to the two new models in the middle weights. Obviously referring to this, so what is the 890 Duke GP? Well, it looks like a fancier 890 Duke essentially, with additional stickers for a racier look, while a seat cowl for the pillion perch is standard. There'll apparently be a small premium over the standard bike for the GP loadout, and while there's no denying that the newest offering looks seriously cool, I don't think slightly different livery and a single accessory is a whole new model, even if the orange wheels used to be an R exclusive. To be fair, KTM do call this an exciting visual alternative, but basically this follows the trend of adding a paint scheme moniker to a model name to differentiate it, if in this situation backed up by a cowl accessory as standard fitment, which probably does represent most of that $300 premium you'll expect to pay here in Australia. Pricing I'm seeing quoted for Australia is $17,120 right away for the GP, compared to $19,840 for the full Berries 890 Duke R in 2022, with that price in the UK for the GP being £10,249. I haven't been able to spot US pricing unfortunately. What are you getting in the 890 Duke GP? The 889cc parallel twin pumping out 115 horsepower and 92 newton meters of torque with a PASC slipper clutch and 6 speed gearbox, Bosch EMS and ride by wire plus 46mm throttle body. The exhaust remains the brush steel high undertail unit and the bike is of course Euro 5 compliant. As in the other 890 variants, the chrome molly denim steel frame runs the engine as a stressed member, and WP Apex provide the 43mm USD forks and monoshock, with 140 and 150mm of travel respectively. Total ground clearance is a generous 191mm. Seat height is a fairly run of the mill 820mm as well, not super tall or super short really, and of course the rider ergo will be the same, a somewhat aggressive upright naked bike stance with wide bars. Lighting is full LED with a colour TFT dash, supermoto and cornering ABS, three standard ride modes with an optional track mode plus anti-wheelie, traction control and throttle maps. Providing cornering functionality is a 6D IMU. The bike weighs in at 169 kilos, but that is a dry figure with a 14 litre fuel tank and claim of 4.8 litres per 100 kilometres, meaning 250 kilometres between stops should be easily doable. Brakes are four piston calipers on 300 mm rotors on the front with a single floating two pot caliper at the rear on 240 mm rotor. So fairly standard stuff there with those being the KTM branded calipers. The wide bars also offer four position of rotation for a more tailored ergonomic with typical Duke handling the expectation here, if perhaps not quite as impressive as the 890 Duke R, which offers the adjustable suspenders. That rear fender is the one area that stands out as a bit of an eyesore, but then that's a bit of an expectation these days, explaining the popularity of fender delete and tail tidy kits. Obviously competition for the 890 Duke GP are bikes like the MT-09 which is more competitively priced and offers fully adjustable forks in contrast, the Chuono 660 which demands more of a premium and is perhaps closer to the 890 Duke car, and the Street Triple R which again demands a higher premium for a high spec loadout. Overall I think the addition of the 890 Duke GP is a move aimed at making it a more enticing package with a bit more style to help balance out the appeal of the higher spec 890 Duke R which will carry an almost $3000 premium here in Australia. But let me know what you think of the 2022 KTM 890 Duke, is this the bike you'll be considering this year and what are your thoughts about the move by KTM? Let me know in the comments and as always thanks for watching and stay safe out there. If you like the content you can support the channel on Patreon.